Ranting, reflecting, reasoning, reckoning. The Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz. Buy all your office supplies and stationery online now. Cameron Slater is with us from Whale Oil. Hello, Cam. Hey, Larry. Josie Bagani is back. Josie, hi. Hello. Cameron, issue number one, the America's Cup. Team New Zealand stun Oracle in the first three races but dropped the fourth. How's it looking for you, Cam? Well, if we keep going on that ratio of three wins to every one loss, then we get to nine first, and I'm okay with that. (laughs) (laughs) Josie, I I say it's not over till the fat lady sings, and I'm a bit worried uh, after Oracle's last race, but let's see what happens. Yes, I know this is a very girly thing to say, but I was almost glad that Oracle won a race today because it makes it competitive. I mean, I watched that first race on Sunday because the first race was when we knew which boat was faster, and it was electrifying. And now I feel that because Oracle have won, now I'm nervous, and now I want to know that Mm. that they're going to keep winning. But, um, But it's a competition. But I think it's pretty clear. I mean, the, the fourth race, the fourth race or the second race today, uh, Team New Zealand were a bit soft in the start, and they paid for that. But if you have a look at when they've been aggressive, even though they copped a penalty in the first race this morning, they just overtook them. Oh, and, and up, they, they, they look when like that boat is phenomenal. It's in, they look like Formula One cars, oh, no, don't they? I mean, they look like. Stormtroopers in black, the guys, they're dressed in their black helmets with their black outfits on. I mean, these are gladiators. And the boats are like, they are, they're like those Star Wars ships that the stormtroopers fly around in. I mean, here's it's the important incredible. thing, is my family's not really that interested in, in sport, yet my daughter was up with me this morning watching the, the America's Cup, and she's enthusiastic about it. And I think it actually doesn't appeal, because it, it, you've got a short attention span. You've got two races over and done with by 9.30, and, uh, and you've got an uh, unequivocal result. It's a sport for the digital, digital age, isn't it? But, yes. look, I think that I, look, I really hope we win it. I hope it comes back here. We can fix the problems in the race that make it competitive so we get rid of the court cases and the stupidity that, that yep. prevented it being a competition to date. Um, but also I want to see what the gains are for New Zealand when it come, if, it, if it comes here. Well, there'll and be massive I, gains. We've already will, gained but, hundreds of millions of dollars even though it's not in New Zealand, through the boat building, through technology, through skills transfer, all but of I'd those But I'd like to see things. more of that, Cam, because I reckon we're, we're positioned to be, you know, I've said it before, but a Fonterra-type size uh, boat building company with the kind of world-leading design in R&D. And if we can, you know, look, I'm fine using taxpayers' money to invest in that. It's a good, it's a good diversification of the economy. <laughs> right. you know, I want to see more of that. Uh, I think there is cause to be optimistic, but I wouldn't be breaking out the champagne just yet. We'll come back in just a moment. Jason Bagani and Cameron Slater on the huddle. It's 16 to 6. And News Talk ZB. It is now 14 to 6. Larry Williams Drive with the new ANZ, the bank that gives you more. And we're back on the huddle. Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater. Issue number two, Josie, the Aussie election landslide, predictable, Labor pretty much imploded. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as everybody was predicting. It was a it was a bad day for Labor, certainly. But uh, I think Kevin Rudd said they saved the furniture. Really, um, the worst result in a hundred years. But they didn't they... wipe out in Queensland, and they were they were predicted to completely wipe out. In fact, Kevin Rudd's seat was on the line, and Western Sydney, I think. But but look, I think it's what's interesting is, is that certainly Labor lost it rather than Tony Abbott won it. I mean, if you look at the it's figures, away, away. fewer than half the voters who abandoned Kevin Rudd and Labor switched to the coalition, which is interesting in itself. So they've gone to a whole heap of of, um, the weird and wonderful fringe parties and and minority parties in the Senate, which is just extraordinary. My favourite is is a a petrol head called Ricky Moore, I think, who's uh, leader of the Australian Mm. Motoring Enthusiast Party. All right, your response, Cam. Look, um, Kevin Rudd is really the David Cunliffe of New Zealand politics, deeply despised by so many people, so arrogant and uh, false in almost everything he does, and the public saw through it. You've seen various left-wing commentators in Australia come out and say, well, the media uh, won it for Abbott. But the bottom line is, is that people were sick to death of the, of the ructions, of the infighting, or, and in particular uh, pursuing crazy policies, especially regarding 
you know, carbon pricing and carbon taxes, and they just threw them out, and that's the end of it. And I think it was the faceless men they really reject. They were sick of a party being well, run by, you know, the, the faceless men behind the scene who seemed to be running the government. But I, I disagree with you, Cam, that, they, that this was a, a, a kicking Labor out because of the economy. I mean, you know, actually, with that the economy has done extremely well. They've avoided, tanking, a glo- though, they've avoided a recession in the global financial crisis. Unemployment was... Well, hold on now. That's not quite... No, no, no. Come on, Josie. That's, the- that's old news now. Australia's economy is a, is, a, is a two-fold economy. You've got a mineral-based economy, and then you've got the city-based economy. And right. the city-based economy is suffering immensely. And, and even now, with the, with the mineral wealth, uh, it's really suffering. If you've got no people that are over there, they're not having a whole heap of, of fun in Australia. Well, right. they've done better than us. No, no, well, actually, we're on the global competitiveness, the report out last week, Josie, we're actually uh, ahead of them. They, they were free of debt when Labor went into government, and now they've got their billions and billions. Mind you, they threw $50 billion away. And... The Green Taliban yep. has not worked for Labor okay. at all. It's a poison challenge. Josie, Labor candidates roadshow here, looking like uh, Mr Cunliffe has the unions, uh, Mr Robertson may be the caucus, but... But Wilting and Mr Jones, well, who would know? Well, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah, certainly David Cunliffe is, is leading the polls at the moment and it looks like it's going to go his way, but it could still go anyway. And I'll give you an example that um, even though I heard you earlier talking about Shane Jones, and certainly he needs to tone down some of that rhetoric and... Uh, and it does sort of turn some people off. But it actually, he's talking to a whole heap of people who have abandoned Labour who would come back to Labour because they, if they had someone mm. like him talking about the pro-development jobs and progress. And, and one example tonight, uh, the Tikarari poll on um, Māori TV shows that Māori voters want Shane Jones by more than two to one. So, uh, oh, well, you know, okay. he's appealing to people. Cameron, he's okay, string, right. stringing the Prime Minister up, the sexual innuendo, I think he's proving he's not Prime Minister material. This is Mr Jones. What do you say? Well, well, what have you got to choose from? I mean, we've got a talent pool that's as shallow as a car park puddle here. We've got David <laughs> Cunliffe, who stated that saying Shane Jones was going to give him his preferences. J- Shane Jones said, no way, Jose. You had uh, uh, Grant Robertson lying about his partner and now coming up tonight with a, a, a whole other excuse for the reason why Elf was hidden in the back. Apparently he's just picking him up to take him home, but there he was buying a beer. So that's a real good example to set. And now you've got uh, the, the farce over Shane Jones. Uh, I, I'm astonished. You've got the unions and the members want Cunliffe. You've got the caucus want Robertson. Shane Jones wants himself. And the general public think that he's a bit of a larrikin and could be a bit of a laugh. That's not a recipe for unity after they've had this uh, this talent quest. Uh, once again, thank you for coming on the program. That is Cameron Slater and Josie Pagani on the Huddle Murray Deca in just a moment. It's now nine to six.